Okay, we're filming. Good evening and welcome to the inaugural edition of On the Fly Cooking brought to you by Sofa King Productions. Uh, tonight we're going, this whole thing is about the average person cooking. Uh, I have a buzz. <laughs> You can cook with a buzz. Sometimes, I'm, this isn't a drunk cooking show, but I happen to be buzzed tonight. I have had a, a couple of alcoholic beverages. I have had a couple of alcoholic beverages. And, um, but this is about uh, average people doing average cooking, but maybe with things that they haven't um, tried before. So tonight we're doing um, uh, country style pork ribs in the house. We're not going to put these out on the grill. We're going to do these in the oven and they're going to be so so fucking <laughs> tender that uh, You're starting to see how that comes together now, right? Um, <laughs> they're going to be so fucking tender uh, Because this is so fucking productions and we're going to show you how to do it Just like Roseanne sometimes I might smoke, but I will not put the ashes in my food um, so welcome to the inaugural edition. <laughs> Do it when it happens, right? Here we go. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to get these um, country style pork ribs out of you know the package now they've been in the refrigerator they're cold all the way through right they was cold when you bought them you brought them home you put them in the refrigerator they need to come down in temperature a little bit because um you know when they start cooking the warmer they are when they start then you know they got they got a head start so let's just pull these bitches off of here and i've got a, a baking dish here just um the best way to do that if you don't have a baking dish is to, um, if one of your friends has like a Sam's Club card or something, um, ask, oh, that one looks like a fish, look. <laughs> That's fucking crazy. <laughs> that looks like a damn fish, but it's a piece of pork. You want to make sure it didn't come out of the river. I mean, no, it didn't come out of the river. Oh God, look at this big piece. Um, but, um, but yeah, if you have any friends that has like a Sam's Club thing, they sell these by the two or three pack for near nothing. And you just can't beat them. I mean, uh, good Lord, look at that. Those two are stuck together, you know. There's a real world example of, you know, whatever. But uh, we want to get these out here. We want to get them away from each other and give, we have much more surface area now exposed to the, temperature in the room. Look how much fat's on that one. Um, I'm going to set that off to the side. And here we go. Now, let's take these two right here and not that one. But these two right here, they have so much fat. And these things are going to cook slow. And we have a shallow baking you know, pan that we're going to use. So that fat's going to melt. And it's going to turn into a liquid and you don't want to put yourself in a position where if you for some reason want to pull this out during the cooking process that the pan is so full of liquid that you're going to spill it um, so i'm going to trim off this excess fat here on these and this one is so much fat and so little meat right here i'm just going to you know say hell with it because it's just me and um and just hack off that end right there. The cats would love that. I should throw it outside. I think I will. Kitty, kitty. <laughs> I guarantee you that will not be there in the morning. Somebody going to come and get that and take it. Um, but get rid of all that excess fat like that on these really, really fat pieces. And you notice I'm not cooking with fancy knives. You look at how many passes I'm taking at this, trying to get it cut off of there. This is not the fancy cooking channel. 
This is Sofa King Productions. So that look at that. Much better, right? This one here, I don't even know what to tell you about that. I think I'm going to come across the fat right here like that. Take that good piece. Put it on there. And again, the fat to meat ratio on this is just, you know, what's the benefit really? If you was really frugal, cut off that big old hunk of fat right there. Again, this is for the purpose of not having so much hot fat in your pan that when you take it out of the oven that you risk burning yourself with, uh, you know, hot oil, you know, or fat, right? Um, so and there's really nowhere in the pan to put it. Uh, I'm just going to stack it there. So again, all right, this is all about, um, you know, just everyday cooking and, you know, things that you see when you're at the store. And this was like 11 $12. And how many issues am I going to get of that? You know, because it's me. I'm a, I'm a single male, single male. And uh, so I'm going to eat a lot on that. So for 11 12 bucks, that's, that's a hell of a bargain. And, um, but I've got them out of the package. They're not stacked in there side by side, retaining the coolness. Now they can sit out here and start coming up to room temp. And um, we're going to season these. And that's the next step before they go into the oven. Weird. I'm going to. Okay, so now it's time to start working on how we're going to spice up these ribs. And I've got just a little plastic thing here that I got like four of them from the dollar store for a dollar, 25 cents for that. And so here's the uh, spices we're going to use. Uh, we've got some salt and pepper, right? That's natural. We're going to do some chili powder to give it some, um, well, some chili powder taste. Uh, got some ground cumin here. Uh, cumin gives it that smoky flavor as if it came off the grill, so that's kind of nice to use. And garlic powder and onion powder, these two, I mean, make a lot of things taste really good. Um, so I think you can't go wrong, but the question is how much? Well, if you look at what you got, um, and I try to imagine if I was doing it by hand, I'm thinking a tablespoon of salt and I think most of this stuff I do is going to be a tablespoon. There's a tablespoon of salt. Now pepper, I like the fresh cracked black. I get these things that you grind from the bottle. And it can take for hell and ever to get the same amount of pepper. But I'm just not down with, um, you know, the red and white package of pepper that's already, you know, ground pepper. I'm just not down with that. Um, I'd like to get somebody who really likes me and cares about me. If y'all get me like an electric or battery powered uh, pepper grinder, I, you know. Okay, so let's get some pepper in here. You can hear it crunching up them big, big pieces, right? And so that, you know, pepper flavor sealed into you crack it open and you get better pepper flavor. Oops, almost knocked it off the thing. So by doing this, I usually don't end up with as much pepper as I would really like to have because my arm gets tired. And my arm's tired. Okay. Cumin. I'm just going to go with a teaspoon of this. <laughs> and if you miss a little bit and you get a little bit more, hey, that's fine. Teaspoon of cumin. I'm going to go with a tablespoon of the garlic powder because I I want that. It's going to give it not only the flavor, but it's also going to give it a look. Because we're not browning these before they go in. So I'm going to do a tablespoon of garlic powder. Then I'm going to go with a teaspoon of uh, onion powder. Oh. 
sometimes, you know, you use, if you're like me, you got these uh, seasonings in your cupboard, but you don't use them a whole lot. They get kind of hard. You got to break them up. A uh, teaspoon of um, garlic powder. Garlic's good for you, good for your heart. Teaspoon of onion powder. So there's the rub that I'm going to use. Uh, that simple. And uh, so I'm going to mix this up, spread it over the uh, pork, and get it ready to go into the oven. So, um, so now we have the, uh, the dry rub, right? And we're going to start sprinkling it. And I hope this is enough for both sides. If you can, just work with what you got, you know? But I'm going to try to uh, just sprinkle this over. Would like to do both sides. And just start rubbing that in. Your hands are going to... There's a spider. Your hands are going to get porky and stuff like that, but so just be careful. Don't spread contamination from one thing to another. And don't worry if you can't get both sides because, like I said, the fat that's in here is going to melt and it's going to carry those spices and it's going to steam and it's going to drip on top of what you got here. And, you know, the flavor is going to get infused, but we just tend to kind of like to flavor both sides of our food. So I'm going to flip this over real quick. Here's that one that looks like a fish. Try to get both sides. It doesn't take a lot of seasoning. Come on, I mean, yeah, it's just some flavor. All right. Normally I'd probably wash my hands at this point, but shut up. Got my buddy Donnie in the other room here and making fun of me. All right, so nothing gained, nothing lost, nothing ventured, whatever. I'm going to use all of this, what's left, because that's what I did it for, right? Get it on there. Okay. So when you cook in the oven, I mean, there's different kinds. You know, there's dry heat cooking, there's braising, there's, uh, I guess in the oven, I don't know, but, um, so this is going to be a dry heat and, um, braising is you put some liquid in there to, uh, let it start steaming and, uh, help cook the meat. That's braising. Dry heat cooking is you're not adding any liquid. And so we're not going to add any liquid because as the pork, as the fat melts, it's going to make the liquid. It'll start steaming. It'll drip back down. It's going to self-baste. How? Because we're going to put some aluminum foil on it. <laughs> All right. So aluminum foil. Um, you know, we get our boxes of aluminum foil. Here's a tip. We get our boxes of aluminum foil, and on the ends, there's a thing that says press here to lock and roll. Because if you don't do that, and when you go to lift the thing, how the whole roll wants to come out, go ahead and look at the end of your Reynolds. We all buy Reynolds unless we're buying whatever, you know. Even the, the store brands, it'll say press here. It's a hollow tube, and basically it's just putting a tab in that tube to keep the uh, roll from coming out on you when you lift it. But um, so anyway, we're going to take this and we're going to seal that up. It's not going to be a perfectly tight seal, but it's going to be enough to keep it, the liquid, you know, uh, from just escaping out. And it's going to help to cook it and make it more tender. Our oven is at 325. And this is going to go for 
three and a half hours. Now, once you put this in the oven, there's no peaking, there's none of that. You know, which, every time you open, yeah, every time you open up the oven door, the heat that comes out, once you close the door, you got to give it 10 minutes just to get back up to the temperature that it was set at so it can continue cooking. This is one of those you don't peek at. Going in the oven, 325, three hours and 15 minutes you can check, but, you know, all right, here it goes. And say so it's a meal that even a living man can afford. Huh? It's a, and it's a meal that even a living man can afford. <laughs> yes, this is the living man food. <laughs> okay. 325, <laughs> see in three and a half hours. <laughs> this is cooking on the fly from Sofa King Productions. <laughs> now the judge not leaving the room. Judge, jury, and executioner. Welcome back, and uh, this is a little special bonus edition of this uh, version of um, uh, Sofa King's productions of Cooking on the Fly. Um, you know, we got these pork ribs. <laughs> We got these pork ribs in here in the oven. They're gonna be done in about 10 minutes. Um, and so we wanna think about maybe saucing them up a little bit, right? So you'll notice over here, I'm gonna slide it over here real easy. Got this container. This is actually a mini uh, uh, slow cooker thing. And got this bottle of Frank's original up here. Well, it's holding down a bottle of uh, some hunts well happens to be honey hickory barbecue sauce that I have and it was in the fridge and you know so it's gonna be kind of sluggish doesn't want to come out so I put a little bit of hot sink tap water in this thing here it wants to float and I just kind of held it down there in the hot water with the Franks to thin it up so it'll want to pour out of the bottle so this is done you know, except for that right there, this thing's clean. It didn't need to be washed, rewashed, but I guess I missed that the first time. Uh, so we got us some hunts here, uh, barbecue sauce. And hold that thought. Oh, there it is. And, uh, and so the thing we're gonna do here is uh, make some sauce to put onto some of these ribs that are coming out. You might not wanna season all of them or you know, sauce all of them. <coughs> you might just wanna sauce some of them, but. Um, so anyway, this, this would be the sauce. I am going to take, I'm gonna look in the, yeah, in the dishwasher here. I'm gonna take this little saucepan and now that my Hunt's sauce is, uh, you know, ready, willing, and able to come out, let's get some of that in there. That doesn't take a whole lot because we're just gonna brush this on to the ribs, so that was just a little bit in the bottle that served that purpose. Um, I want to take, I hate to use a cutting board for this, but I'm not, my grandma is hollering in my ear, don't cut on the countertop. Um, I'm going to take a, a tablespoon of butter, I'm just going to dip, or you know, drop that in there and get the paper off of it. <laughs> oh God. I was just having a flashback of my father-in-law. He made himself a cheese sandwich one time and he forgot to take the plastic off the cheese. <laughs> okay, so um, tablespoon of butter. I can't believe I just dirtied that thing just for that. Looks pretty good. Cook it on the fly. 
Um, funny how things don't work out the way you want them to. Okay. Um, the barbecue sauce is a little thick. I like to cut it with some apple cider vinegar. Out of the way. Some apple cider vinegar just to thin it out a little bit. And it gives it that little. <coughs> go by sight and just to give us some attitude some Frank's original hot sauce now Frank's original hot sauce is to me one of the best hot sauces out there but I'm gonna tell you right now if you're ever doing chicken wings and you get the Frank's or the Frank's hot sauce for wings it's even hotter than this this brings a lot of flavor and some heat and this is my favorite part. I'm not afraid to use, you know, a reasonable amount of it. But if it was the uh, one for the wings, I'd be. So, you know, it's just a mess right now. This butter is going to melt, bring this all together. Let me get that on the heat, um, make a little sauce. Ribs are coming out in about five minutes. It's just a matter of heating this up and melting it, brushing it. It's all good like that. Welcome back to this final segment of the first and inaugural uh, edition of uh, Cooking on the Fly. Um, three hours and 15 minutes have gone by, and we've taken our, uh, I called it a baking dish earlier, but it's a sheet pan. Uh, we've taken our sheet pan of ribs out of the oven, and so now we're going to, you know, unveil them. I was really careful when I pulled them out to keep the pan level uh, in case of any liquid. And we're just going to pull this off. We're going to get rid of that. And there is, I don't know if you can see this or not, there's, ow, <laughs> sorry. there's quite a bit of liquid in the bottom. It's that fat that melted steamed drip back down on top of it and just a cycle and makes everything really tender now uh, as far as tenderness i would say this is a pretty meaty looking piece right here i'm just going to take my fork right down in right up no problem and there's some fat there but i mean tender is tender there's you know can't question that. Now, uh, just take this one out here. Twist the fork, falls right apart. See there? That was tender, tender, tender. So next time you see uh, Western style pork ribs on sale, I mean, you know, you say that's one, if you've got a big family, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine people, say six of them are adults, three of them are kids. Everybody's gonna get plenty, you know, for 11 bucks, for that, for the meat, come on. That's a good deal. Mmm, tender. 
Look that good. <laughs> You can't get any more tender than that, and the flavor is really good. So we had this um, sauce that we made, which I'm going to grab here, as well as a brush. Right. Here we go. And this is actually a paintbrush that I got from the Lowe's. And so when I mixed together the ingredients from the bonus segment, <laughs> oh god. And uh, and cooked it so the butter. See it now. It's all just together now as a single thing. Cooked it down so it thickened back up a little bit. I'm just gonna get load up this brush. And this one is begging for it right here. Nice big meaty. <coughs> I'm coughing from the vinegar that's in here. Get that on there. You don't have to do all of them, do some of them. Give yourself a break between the, you know, spicy and not spicy. Unless you're just a totally spicy kind of person and you want it on everything, then do it on everything. But I like to give myself a choice between spicy food and not spicy food. <laughs> so that's going to conclude this, the first and inaugural edition of Cooking on the Flaps and um, by Sofa King Cool Productions. And now when you go to the grocery store, and you see those, <laughs> and you see those uh, country style pork ribs on sale mm. in the middle of the winter. You can do it at home in the oven. Delicious, tender, main course, 11 bucks. Lots of folks cook well. <laughs>